The following presentation is about process reliable parameterization of total vehicle models for driving dynamics and ride comfort. It's a presentation of a complete parameterization line using effective simulation methods and capable test rigs. My name is Stefan Bender. I'm the managing director of AMFD, Automobilforschung Dresden GmbH. The AMFD is founded in 2011 as a spin-off out of the Technical University of Dresden and special the Institute for Vehicle Technology under the lead of Professor Dr. Günther Brokop. We have four working sections. The first section is NVH and fatigue testing. The second section is vehicle dynamics, driving comfort, efficiency and tires. The fourth section is Vehicle and Traffic Safety and the fourth section is Driving Simulation. In these fields we can offer services, we can generate functional chain understanding and can offer the development of methods and models for different applications and vehicle types. The presentation is structured as follows. At first I would like to give you a short motivation as an introduction. Then I would like to show you our solution approach, um, how we combine modeling, parameter identification and validation. Then I would like to give you some examples on total vehicle level, on subsystem level and component level. And I would like to close with, the out with an outlook. If you have a look on the V-model of the vehicle development process, we have the virtual testing on the left side, starting with the total vehicle requirement specification, the subsystem design, the component design. On the right side, we have the real testing in a lab on the road, component test, subsystem test, up to road test. So we separate in three different levels. It's component level, it's a subsystem level and a total vehicle level. In this development cycle, development time is always a critical issue and considering that road testing is the most time consuming issue, if something went wrong, we have to save costs in respect of road to rig testing. So moving road testing to rig testing and also moving rig testing to desktop testing and road testing also to desktop testing. Therefore, we need a virtualization of the V-model and the development process. What means uh, we need to do front loading and uh, for front loading, we need simultaneously engineering from real to virtual side. That means we need a good virtual testing process and a good validation process. The next slides will show the solution approach for modeling, parameter identification and validation. Modeling, parameterization and validation is an iterative process as a consistent combination of modeling, parameterization and validation based on real world experiments and test rigs. Let's start with modeling. Uh, modeling we understand as a generation of system understanding through abstraction and reduction to essential effects. We start with a real suspension, then we transfer to a MBS uh, a detailed simulation model and then we abstract the simulation model and on the back loop we validate the model. So we have a cycle of observing, reproducing and understanding. In the parameterization process, uh, we do the parameter identification corresponding to the uh, different model levels of detail. Here in this case shown for a KNC measurement um, uh, in combination with a um, car maker environment simulation. The validation target is uh, to increase the efficiency and accuracy of validation by, by simulating uh, the environment of the specimen within the validation tests. And then uh, with these results, we go back into this iterative process. The next slide is showing the solution approach at the example of elastomeric bearings. Uh, here we have some established models on the market. Kelvin Fogg is a relative simple model. 
if you would like to implement hysteresis behavior, you have the Dronka and Rau. Both models are sufficient for driving dynamics, right comfort, and acoustics discussions. If you have a combination of high dynamics with high amplitudes, it's getting insufficient. And these uh, combinations you have very soon in the durability area, fatigue testing. Where it's also getting insufficient is in the if you have a multi-axial excitation, and this you have as soon as you consider the influence of stops as deformation limits in a elastomeric bearings, because these uh, deformation limits um, have an increase in stiffness due to lateral deformation in the stops. They also have an increase in loss work due to lateral deformation, and they also have an open hysteresis based on their stick slip effects. Therefore, we developed a new model approach and a new model to represent high loads, hydraulic damping, and multi axial excitations by a combination of a part considering the viscous linear damping with the viscous non linear damping. If you look to the models, uh, six and eight are representing the multi-axial stiffness components and five and seven are illustrating the multi-axial dynamic components, what means uh, the increase in the material damping due to lateral deformation and transient multi-axial dynamic effects. And we also have an implementation of uh, non-linear gain functions as an adaptation of dynamic parameters depending on deformations. The next slide shows the parameter identification with the example of particle swarm optimization method according to Kennedy and Eberhardt. So we have a model uh, with the corresponding particles and parameters. You have the deformation time series measured at the test rig as an input to the model and the output are the load time series simulated. This you have to compare compare with the load time series measured. And at the end, you get a movement equation of, of the particles with the particle experience and the swarm knowledge in combination with weighing factors. Let's come to the validation. On the left side, you see the test rig for elastomeric bearing validation. Um, it is, can be used for performance as well as fatigue testing, can load the elastomeric bearing in XYZ direction plus one rotational direction up to 100 Hertz. If you have a look on the comparison of measurement measured load signals with simulated ones in X direction, you see a relative big deviation, especially at high force signals independent if you look on the Tonka Rau or the Kelvin Vogt model. At the bottom you see a little bit more resolution in these high peak areas and you see the dif difference between measured and simulated data in respect of cycle of glasses as well as relative cumulative damage. With our own model, with our improved model, we could show a much better fit uh, between the simulated and between the measured data. So um, the much better fit ends up in a much higher accuracy and also an increase of the signal damage as shown in this slide. The parameter identification can be done on different levels of detail. Starting with the lowest level of detail, uh, you have the characteristic curve-based models. So the parameters are uh, mass and inertia, so vehicle weight, center of gravity coordinates, and inertia tensors. And in respect of kinematics and compliance, you have the toe camber longitudinal and lateral translation through parallel and anti-parallel wheel deflection, a longitudinal a lateral translation caused by steering, and uh, also under side forces. The kinematic MBS model, you have also the mass and inertia parameters of abstracted components 
component masses, center of gravity coordinates, and inertia tensors. You have the hard point coordinates, positions of joint and reference frame, and you have the spring and damper characteristics um, like linearized scalar parameters or lookup tables. The most detailed or more detailed model is the elastokinematic MBS model with cut bodies. The mass and inertia parameters of detailed components, component mass, center of gravity coordinates, and inertia tensor. You have the elastomeric bearing behavior, linear and nonlinear parameters for dynamic multiaxial bearing behavior. And you have the spring and damper characteristic as an advanced model parameters to represent non-linearities, e.g. friction. Coming to the parameter identification, we have established a parameter identification process or parameter identification suite. There are different kinds of test beds implemented from left to right. On the vehicle level, we have the zero order kinematics test bed for the wheel alignment and so on. We have the vehicle inertia measuring machine for inertia estimation and also for a center of gravity estimation. We have the suspension motion simulator or KNC. We have the tire property testing in uh, for different parameters, lateral or transversal, and we have the whole vehicle validation on test track. Knowing the functional chain and also the interfaces, we can project the measurement results into subsystem and component levels. There we have, for example, uh, road load simulators for axle testing, brake testing, elastomeric bearing testing, spring damper testing, and so on. For sure, for this uh, parameter identification process, we need a very good tool chain of measurement equipment as well as simulation equipment in order to have really a complete street and chain and can exchange data from test rig to test rig. This process is implemented in our uh, vehicle test center in Dresden. Uh, here you see some pictures. A lot of or the most test beds are already existing, but as you can see at the bottom, we are currently expanding our test center and uh, this will be read, ready really soon. As principles for validation, we can use the repetition of experiments for statistical evaluation of measurement uncertainties, the model effect validation by variation of test configuration as robustness check, and the use of objective performance indicators. Here shown as an example on vehicle level for the intensification versus steering frequency and also phase shift versus steering frequency. The advantage of this multi-level aspect of solution approach is that we can save test efforts through um, use of data on multiple levels of detail and we can also reuse the parameter identification tests uh, to validate also on a subsystem level here, for example, um, what is uh, shown here is uh, uh, using the KNC char characteristics found on the total vehicle parameter identification can be also reused uh, on a subsystem Excel model. What is also really important um, for the validation is to have digital twins of the test rigs here shown for the road load simulation. The target is to increase the efficiency and accuracy uh, in the validation process. And uh, this is done by simulating the environment of the specimen within the validation. So what are the advantages of that? The advantage is um, the possibility to differentiate test rig effects uh, with uh, specimen effects. And the next advantage is to use drive signals for excitation which are determined by simulation. And uh, the third one is that we have an increasing efficiency by model-based preparation of the experiments itself. So now let's come to some examples, um, application examples on total vehicle level, subsystem level, and component level. The next slide shows 
three examples on total vehicle level. On the left side, you see a road test validation for the example of roll angle versus uh, lateral acceleration uh, for different load variations. On the, in the middle, you see the static and dynamic K and C measuring. Uh, static, you see the table excitation and the translation and rotation of the wheel with the corresponding dynamic transfer functions uh, where you see uh, amplitude versus frequency. On the right side, you see the parameter inertia parameter identification. So you have uh, an equation of three equations with three parameters and the parameters which can be obtained by the motion measurement and one parameter set which can be obtained by the force measurement. Here you see three examples on subsystem level. On the left side you see the axle transfer behavior where you see a set force versus time for axle carrier bearing, strut bearing and wheel hub. In the middle you see the suspension characteristics also set force versus set displacement and set velocity for different frequencies on the strut bearing. And on the right side, you see a power train testing uh, with a DOE-based efficiency map identification. And now three examples for the component level. On the left side, uh, the tire parameter identification. In this case, the skew stiffness against the wheel load. In the middle, spring and damper characteristics. You see the F-damper force versus the movement. And on the right side, you see the force versus displacement on a McPherson strut. And on the right side, you see the elastomeric behavior force versus movement. Now let's come to the outlook. As a summary, you have seen some really effective methods and tools uh, to improve and to increase the development efficiency in the vehicle development process. But also as an outlook, uh, we would like to present what are the next steps. Uh, so the next steps can only be to integrate the simulation tools and the simulation environment, what we have seen in the presentation on component simulation, total vehicle simulation, but also test rig simulation into a digital backbone and to combine that with uh, the human machine interface coming uh, from the uh, Dresden driving simulator, but also from the existing vehicle test center in Dresden on uh, vehicle level, subsystem level, and component level. This in a complete combination in a digital backbone under real time processing makes it possible to really make efficient and accurate development methods and processes. At this point, I would like to say thank you very much. And if you have any questions, please contact us. Thank you.